da senhora? Cláudia. Hello, what's your name? Please tell me what changed in your in your life through the campaign. I've been in the church seven years. When I arrived, I was full of debts and many problems, such as the health of my children. And my marriage, during the first five years in the church, I did participate in the campaign of Israel. And I started to conquer some blessings. I paid my debts. I arrived with my shop in bankruptcy. And my son was ill. He had an inflammation in the joints and couldn't walk for 16 years. But one year and nine months ago, I was living in a small rent house that I had to pay 450 reals. I was alone with my children in that small house. I had paid some debts of the house, of the shop, but the business was stuck. I didn't know what to do in that very difficult situation. And the campaign of Israel came about. I'm from Sarah. I was seated at the back of the church and I heard the pastor preaching about taking your feet off the ground. But I didn't know what that was. And then I said to myself, my God, what is this? And I had just received 150,000 reals from a court case. I was planning to buy the building where my shop was because I lived in a rent house and the shop was also rented. I was paying 450 reals for one and 450 reals for the other. And then the pastor spoke about taking your feet off the ground. At that time, I was a widow and was dating an assistant, but it wasn't yet serious. And the pastor said that I, whatever I wanted was on the altar. The man of God I wanted in my life wasn't in the church, neither seated in the chairs or the walls. He's here on the altar. The family you want is on the altar. You may have money to buy a house today and a nice one, but maybe it won't be a home. And Bishop, I've never had a home. I was physically abused in my previous marriage, humiliated, cheated on. Many times my children had to save me from his hands. But as the pastor was preaching, I disagree with him. Instead of doing like Jacob, I got angry at him. Can I say what was on my mind at the time? I said, who is the pastor? because he had just arrived in the church. I didn't know where he came from, and he's asking me to take my feet off the ground. He's just, he's not even a bishop. I was seated at the back, contradicting everything the pastor was saying, because I actually knew what was to take my feet off the ground. I knew the money I had just received from my court case was my sacrifice, and that, that would change my life. But I kept resisting that fact. I decided to sacrifice when the pastor said two things. First, if you can manage to continue living like this, then wait. You don't need to participate or do as you want. But if you say, I can't take it anymore, enough. Either God changes or he kills me. Second, when he said that the man of God I was looking for was on the altar, then I took the decision. I left the church that night, decided. I didn't wait the day to fulfill. I fulfilled the following day. I went to the bank. The manager didn't want to give the money, but I said the money is mine. Put it in a bag, everything, and give it to me. And I took it and put it on the altar. Together with my four children, I took that decision without speaking to anyone. I only told my sons afterwards. Not even my fiancé knew anything as he was working in another state. Then I thought, came to my mind. He doesn't want you anymore because you don't have anything. 
you will lose the shop because no, you can't pay the rent. The devil said this in your mind. Yes. Then after two days, I called my fiancé saying, I'm just calling to end the relationship. Because obviously, he wouldn't accept a woman without anything. So I told him, I've just taken the greatest decision of my life. I've made the biggest investment ever. He said to me, what are you talking about? I said, I went to the altar with everything. I have nothing. I'm alone. Then he said, that's exactly what I was waiting for. You took the best decision ever in your life. Now I'm ready to marry you. At the time, we were planning to get married two year, in two years. We got married in a month time. I sacrificed in November 11th and I got married December 11th. Today, my husband, being an assistant for 16 years and, I, and that I used to abuse today, cutting short, my husband calls me my princess. I am respected and cherished. My four children, because two are mine and two are his, all of them call me mother. Pastor, the altar is wonderful. Because the altar is wonderful, it took a single mother, illiterate, without future, and today the altar gave me a wonderful husband. I'm very much loved by him. I can't even explain. Anything I want, he gives or buys for me. All my children are in the work of God. My three daughters are in the godly wood. They are being prepared to be women of God. Today, I have a home, not just a house, because through the sacrifice I had put on the altar, God gave me a duplex. I live in a great house. I have everything that I could never imagine in my life. You have more than the 150000 you gave. Bishop, I lived in a small rent house. Today, I have six houses rented. This is one year and nine months, starting from zero. My shop is doing very well. In other words, the 150,000 reals you put on the altar, you don't, God gave you much more. Bishop, what God gave me could be 1 million, 2 million, 10 million, 20 or 1 billion. No money in the world could buy what I have today. And above all the encounter I had with God, because I used to be a bitter and an unhappy woman. Almost two years ago, I was in the fifth grade. Today, I'm studying law. You are exploding. Yes, yes. The last campaign of Israel, the pastor asked the last drop of blood. I sacrificed my car. And I had another court case from 2003, and I had lost it. It was a cold case already. But through the sacrifice, I asked God to... For justice again there in court I couldn't even understand the meaning of the words the judge was saying even my lawyer had said there was no way for me to win the case so I had to go alone but God gave me the victory it was my big property and I won the case today my shop is blessed is prospering I have been ro running this shop for 23 years but it was never so prosperous as it God changed your life. Bishop, I'm going to sacrifice my shop. Eh? You are going to make this sacrifice? No one knows about this. No one. Only my husband. And we are going to see you much, much, in, and, and even more here giving your testimony. Amen. Tell God. Because you are a woman of faith. Go in this faith. God bless you. Bye-bye.